How have you all been affected by the water shortages? It's just decimating not only our, our personal wealth, but the communities we live in. Not just financially, but mentally as well. Like, have a look at some of these people, they need committing. And particularly as a dairy farmer and, uh, you know, we've got four blokes working for us, plus me and my brother, and, um, you know, a lot of them are long-term employees, and if this keeps going, like, I don't know, but you've had blokes working for you for 10, 15, 20 odd years going, show's over, mate, you know, um, thanks, we'll see you, you know, like, it's, uh, it's stressful, like, I worry about that more than myself, or for, or more than anything else, um, and, you know, whether they, yeah, yeah, it's taking a big toll, you know, a big toll. It doesn't matter what you grow and without water, you're just a, you know, not a grower. And if you've got to pay this thousand dollars a meg to compete with the cotton and, and the almond guys, it's, it's uneconomical. So you just run out of money quicker. agree with Chris entirely, but after 37 years of growing potatoes here, the biggest threat to my business ever. I can't see how I can actually get back to where I would want to be after this has gone through. It's just going to be that hard. So, yeah, it's a tough one. And we've got, I have got some uh, siblings following on and grandchildren, as Chris has, and it's how yeah, they're going to do it. I've got no idea. Do you think the current situation is going to make younger people, farmers, etc., leave or go out of the industry altogether? Well, they won't have a choice. You know, this this is, you know, uh, you can't grow anything without water. And uh, uh, when it's all just taken away and and, and moved, you, you literally got no choice. So even if you had the option or you wanted to stay, you actually can't. Most of them are gone, I think. Yeah. I mean, you look around the families, you know, in all of the, all of the district, you know, you've got some committed kids that, that, that stay on or get married locally and stay here, but majority that go down to uh, boarding school because there's no government services left here. You know, we've, we've got no banks and post offices and schools and hospitals and those types of things. We don't even have water, telephones. That type of cutback in the, in the region is just catastrophic. And so people go away to school. Uh, of course, they go from there to uni. Mine never come up. What do you think are the major contributing factors to the water shortages? Mismanagement would be probably top of the list. <coughs> um, certainly a, a loss of, uh, I guess, where food comes from uh, in many ways. Um, you know, a complete, it's really only taken two generations to forget uh, where food comes from, you know, uh, and why, why these schemes were set up originally. Ideologies by people that don't care and don't know got to remember in 2016 this total Murray system was chock-a-block. It's only three years ago. Now admittedly we've had some really low inflow years and they equate to probably some of the worst in the 128 years of records but something's changed and definitely that first year and last year we should have got some water to this district. Should have got a fair bit of water and we didn't get any. Sending too much water to the South Australian wasting it on the way. That's what we're on here about. The average voter has their consideration to food is not there anymore because they can go to a supermarket and buy it. It's not a problem. Um, and I do believe that water now as an issue is being used to harness votes rather than food security. What do you think would help solve the problem? A better management is definitely um, a, an absolute, you know, I mean, the, uh, the better regulation of the entire Murray-Darling Basin. There is, there is absolute stupidity going on with the, with the water theft in, in the north. No regulation, no monitoring, no, no control measures in place, um, which subsequently creates a shortfall for the, for the people in South Australia who demand a consistent volume. Um, regardless was, of the season. Regardless of the season, and, and they're getting three times what their original agreement is, and just to go out and waste it out to sea, or you know, they, they, they're, they're causing environmental damage along the way by you know, putting too much down the Murray. And subsequently, that leaves this, this area with zero, zero water. Um, so management is, is a big issue, but, but look, most definitely we need more rain. Um, or, or another supply of water for sure. In other words, you need more water to be introduced into the area from for somewhere. Sure. For sure, absolutely.
but better management. So, you know, yeah. mm. the, the type of concept you're talking about, bringing in a bigger volume of water, it doesn't matter under which scheme, and there are various methods at Bradfields and the other one up at the Clarence or, or from wherever it comes from. You, you're talking 10 years. None of these people sitting around this table or in this community will be here in 10 years, productive or otherwise. Um, so quick fixes can be done with management, longer term sustainable development to, for regional economic development is, is, uh, is it's a necessity to get a, a, a bigger volume of a more consistent supply. Whether you find a, a politician or a political party that you know has the foresight to do that, at the moment I doubt it very much. The House of Reps is 76-74. Only going to get one, two across the floor, and we're right. We can change things, but at the moment we've just got this gridlock of people that are hell bent on ruining us. What do you think would be the benefits of cheaper and more easily accessed water? Sustainable jobs, sustainable food production, sustainable communities going forward. I just put, put something in perspective here, Sharon. We do know from the research that we've done from external independent consultants, we had a socio-economic survey done in our region, which is from my whale to Norman, 750,000 hectares that uses 850,000 megs of water. And with a zero allocation, the net loss to that region was $6 billion. $6 billion. Now, I'm just using some simple multiplications of that to expand it to cover the MIA, which is bigger than ours and closer to probably 10 billion, and the Goulburn Murray water to the south of us, which is again higher input foods, higher value foods, more packaging and, and double handling, really. and as, it would be as much again. So when you, you when you're talking 25 billion dollars, you've got to have of of lost lost production in this region. That's one and a half percent of Australia's GDP. Now Australia's not running at one and a half percent at the moment. So if you want to double the output of this country, then you just need some moron in government to turn the tap on. And it has to be consistent because if you want people to build dairies and put infrastructure in and packaging and processing and all of the grapes and fruit and grain and meat and everything that comes out of this area, the reason the, the dams were built was to drought proof this area and now they turn the water off, or run, they've not turned it off, they've just run it down the river past us to run out to sea. So with a consistent supply volume, you could double the output of this country. That's, that's how, that's how you know, monumental the impact is. What do you think the outcome would be in five, five years' time if, if things weren't addressed to fixing this water problem that you have now? It'd be anarchy, Sharon. <laughs> I'll be leading the charge myself if I get a quarter of a chance, if I'm still standing up. Bit of chaos. Would you support a, a, a scheme or a project like FOMAX Energy are, are um, investigating and proposing at this particular point in time? For sure. We, okay. we, we've not seen, um, as, as Doyle said, politicians with the balls or the brains to look this far ahead. You know, they, they go from election to election. You're talking about a project that's going to cut across several election cycles and to, and to have the foresight to do something like this. I think we lost that ability to have pioneers with with that sort of carriage at uh, whether it was Gallipoli or, or wherever, but the, the forefathers that built this country are, are gone and the, the people we have in Parliament just need to, to grow a set and Australia needs to grow up. But when food prices start climbing, and they are, and the CPI goes up, we've got a an incredibly expensive power system, electricity system. Some uh, states have massive water bills uh, for the householders. Um, pension hasn't gone up. Uh, all those people vote. So the crossbenchers, uh, the independents, uh, will gain traction. They're already the seat of the power in the, the house. You can see by Jackie and uh, Pauline, the influences that they have. So uh, she's on. Are you aware of any other solutions that have been proposed to fix the water issue in the Murray-Darling Basin area? 
other than what FOMAX Energy are proposing at this point in time? No, certainly not as, as detailed and almost, you know, just visionary as this is. We've certainly, certainly nothing like this. I mean, the, the, the three big dams they have, Yield and Dartmouth and Hume, and, there's, and there's the, the um, Snowy Mountain scheme in itself, you know, is a huge scheme and, you know, extremely well thought out and well done. And, you know, I can't believe they did it 60 or 70 years ago, you know what I mean? There's been... There's probably not too many options left as far as that go. You know, there's Big Buffalo they talk yeah. about. And, um, yeah, you know, is another another dam, but certainly not um, uh, making use, better use or huge use of some resources that are, uh, you know, right up to the north there. Yeah. No, but nothing, nothing particularly locally, yeah. There is a system of underground dams or managed checking for recharge, uh, but the governments have just got no aptitude to look at that at all. They don't understand it. Um, the MDBA, I've briefed them personally on that. I've taken Golder Associates and their CEO, their uh, global CEO, to meet with them and uh, got absolutely no response to the point of them being rude. So uh, there's, they just don't want to look at anything yeah, underground dams are pretty straightforward. You just find a sand aquifer, find its parameters. Now that's all can be done uh, easily and uh, accurately. They're not interested. So that's the MDBA, but we're the growers. Now, yeah, we want action. Well, I, I'm aware of um, the Bradfield scheme and the, and the yes. Clarence scheme, which is, again, um, I've been up and flown over them. Um, uh, I don't believe that, that the... Uh, that the Warrego River has the capacity to transmit that that water from that distance. It's not big enough. It's too flat. And I, if it was at all possible to put banks up, well and good. An engineering um, solution will not stop those Queenslanders from taking every drop before it ever makes it to New South Wales or the rest of the Murray Darling Basin. Absolutely. Yep. And, and and I couldn't blame them. You know, no. why would you send water down here for these morons to run out to sea? You're going to run it through the best country in Australia, all that central Queensland red dirt? Well, unless you're going to put a fairly healthy sieve in that pipeline, I'd prefer you sent that Ord River to Canberra because it's full of crocodiles last time, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, hoping we're going to put a filter in it. There's not going to be filter tents, is there really? Yeah. I mean, there's going to be the biggest crocodile you'll ever see. Big as this table, huh? Yeah. It's ironic yeah. at the moment that where it is raining well is where the Bradfield starts, isn't it? Up yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. the, the Clarence is quite a substantial uh, water capture that is wasted straight to sea, yes. but uh, seriously big hills uh, from there to the, to the storage is that supply that northern New South Wales. You know, it's a, the Cotton it's Club a, went over to the Clarence people and promoted that they'd take their water, and the Clarence people chased them out of town. Yeah. Got after them. Go to hell. So it, that's not going to happen. <clears throat> not difficult. Not, no, engineering-wise, you know, it's not a problem. I mean, they, you see what they did with the snowy. I mean, yeah. you dig a hole, is, you know. Yeah. They're big hills. Yeah. 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 The, the, the engineering involved is not, there's nothing rocket science about it. It's, it's basically well done, well documented, simple, really stuff. Just a matter of numbers. Mm. Uh, you know, you, you want X amount of gigalitres down here, well then we've just got to work out the numbers in reverse, that's what we've got to do to get that down here. Have you had any, um, uh, you know, talk to any political moves and shakers? I or? have sent stuff to all of the political leaders and politicians. But I've written to Albo as well, and to Susan Lay, and quite a few others. And even Fiona Simpson, and nothing back from anybody. Yeah, you know, we are trying fairly hard here to be get ourselves at least marginal as an electorate, as a federal electorate. Um, you know, we've, we've got an independent as a state member in New South Wales, and she's doing, uh, well, I think a fantastic job. Mm. Um, Shooter Rick Fisher, she is. Yeah, Shooter and Fisher. Yeah. Oh, well, independent, sorry. Yeah, Shooter and Fisher. Um, she does a fantastic job, and, uh, you know, we're, we're pushing pretty hard to get some kind of independent or certainly out of the two major parties um, or getting it out of really liberal or national hands, you know, that's, it's never going to be a labour seat, I wouldn't think. Um, yeah, so 
shoes and fishes or, or, or someone had a little bit more um, uh, persona, you know, maybe you know, a One Nation even would, would probably stand a good chance. You probably just need someone with a little bit more uh, panache, I suppose. Sailability. Yeah. Sailability.